The Walla Walla Valley is home to over 100 wineries, producing some of Washington State's most coveted wines and drawing wine enthusiasts from around the world. But this industry comes with a serious environmental cost. Like many rural communities, Walla Walla suffers from a lack of local recycling infrastructure. And with material recovery facilities and end-use manufacturers hundreds of miles away, it's also not financially feasible to recycle our glass that way. So it all ends up in the landfill, three or more tons per week during the busy season. In 2020, Walla Walla winemakers and residents came together to develop a solution, ground-to-ground glass sand. Using an Explico glass pulverizing machine, Ground to Ground has diverted 3.5 tons of glass from the landfill in the first quarter of 2022 alone. Bottles are turned into glass sand, a safe-to-handle, non-toxic material suitable for a number of applications where natural sand has historically been the material of choice. Our winery partners and local residents have already taken up the mantle of finding innovative uses for the final product. From recreation, to flood mitigation sandbags, to walkways, driveways, and utility bedding. To date, Ground to Ground has partnered with 25 wineries to divert 16 tons of glass from our landfill. Now, it's time for us to scale up. We're dedicated to working with even more wineries, government agencies, and members of the public to make our model sustainable for the long haul. And we're setting our sights outside the valley too, with hopes to expand to other Washington AVAs like Woodenville and Red Mountain. It'll take a lot of teamwork to meet these goals, but we're excited to educate everyone we can on our core belief. The glass is not garbage, it is an opportunity. The milkman is back, but I'm pretty sure this time he's a woman and he's got more stuff. Laughing Lemon will be rebuilding reusable infrastructure by being Spokane's first grocery store that operates like the milkman. 30% of our waste stream is single-use packaging. This can change if reusables are more convenient to use. Here's an example of me receiving an insulated bag full of reusable containers at my front door. This is what it would look like if I ordered popcorn with a one-time purchase. I would use the tag's QR code to easily reorder from the store. I go through soap a lot, so I'm on a monthly subscription for soap. When I receive a new bottle, I simply switch the lids. On the day of my next delivery, I'll make sure to put my empty jar in the insulated bag and set it back out on my porch. The Laughing Lemon delivery driver will arrive with a new bag and take the empties to be commercially washed and ready to be refilled again and again and again. We know that extra environmental resources are put into glass manufacturing and delivery processes compared to plastic, but it only takes three refills to meet the break-even point. Our business model will operate by partnering with brands and providing white-label products. The decision to partner with brands is important to meet the marketing channels desired by Spokenites that incorporate green behaviors in their daily lives. We discovered that 52% think about being green, but only implement if it's practical. This model reduces the need to import virgin materials and creates more jobs in the state. Small companies benefit with a lower cost for higher quality materials. And most importantly, stop the waste before it starts. We are currently connected with Spokane Zero Waste, Spokane 350, and a network of small businesses and farmers to make this a reality. Coming soon to Spokane's front door in fall of 2022. The Redesign Center uses creative commerce to make a global impact. We turn the crisis of environmental waste and demand for social equity in business into economic opportunities for creative entrepreneurs. We help artists establish their businesses and sell their original works through online and local commerce. We share resources because it's great for the environment and also reduces barriers for historically under-resourced entrepreneurs. And we love to work together and we educate corporate partners about intersectionality and sustainability through hands-on workshops, hybrid team building events, and on-site art installations. We know how to turn waste streams into profit.
Customers want to know how your business is making a positive social and environmental impact, and we're here to help you communicate that to them. Hi, my name is Molly Woodson, and when Lisa first reached out to me about joining the Redesign Center, I was absolutely moved to tears. Um, the whole point of the Redesign Center is to bring to light the fact that sustainability is an issue of intersectionality, and we're providing a work environment that is specifically tailored to people who don't work well in traditional work environments. Corporations and businesses of the future will better reflect the diverse needs of people in our community if we actively facilitate opportunities. The Redesign Center equips artists with the space, knowledge, and skills needed for business. We look forward to working with you. Did you know that 500 million plastic straws are used every single day in the United States and can end up anywhere from our city streets to our precious oceans? Let us paint the picture for you. Plastic straws are horrific for the environment and are even becoming illegal. However, straws cannot be completely eliminated due to consumer preference and physical health restrictions. Our straws are made using the literal stem of the wheat plant, which often is unused by wheat farmers. Origin straws are unique in that they don't get soggy, can be used for hot and cold drinks, are fully compostable, and are gluten-free. We are taking a previously underutilized resource and turning it into a profitable and environmentally friendly consumer item. The global market for drinking straws is over $19 billion, and our initial target market is $14 million here in Seattle, focusing on cafes, restaurants, and bars. Currently, we obtain straws internationally, but shipping straws overseas emits carbon, and with so many wheat farmers here in Washington State, we plan on creating a local partnership of farmers. The process has four simple steps. We first start by cutting the stems of the wheat, then soaking them in salinated water for 12 hours, sanitizing them with UV and infrared rays, and lastly baking them to dry. And there you go, it's ready to use. These stems are an agricultural byproduct created during harvesting, which are often burned or thrown away. This byproduct is our product, and with minimal processing, we can take unwanted stems to create the best eco-friendly straw. Our straws are already on the market, and we are hard at work reaching more cafes, bars, and restaurants, encouraging them to make the switch. We are already supplying a bar in Capitol Hill, and to date, we have made over $2,000 in revenue. We are currently selling via word of mouth, but we plan to ramp up sales and scale our supply chain using dedicated CRM platforms and people to coordinate our business at a large scale, including operational tools like a sales tracker and a warehouse for inventory storage. Our unit cost is currently three cents and our unit revenue is five cents. Through scaling our business and moving to our own local production process, we can bring production costs down to less than a cent and reach higher sales volumes. I want to create the products that I want to see on the store shelf that I don't currently see. I want to speak to the female consumers who maybe aren't buying upcycled products currently and say to them, hey, you know that you can buy a beautiful design that is also upcycled. When I was a teenager, I was obsessed with fashion design. I wanted to be a fashion designer, but at some point I realized how bad for the planet fashion is. I actually wrote my master's dissertation about the market for upcycled products. I have done focus groups and surveys with my products. I've collected materials from dozens of organizations. Right now I'm working with a truckload full of busted pool float toys that I collected in partnership with Ridwell last summer. I then contract with industrial stitching companies who fabricate the products. I see this business as growing in a spiral where more sales lead to more business relations to collect the waste, leads to more sales, to build division. A business that has a massive warehouse that employs dozens of people.
I work with the program supporting refugees. I've been a program manager for projects that work with homelessness and housing and connecting with employment programs. I want to quit my job to pursue Roses Are Rubbish full time, but I do not want to quit the social aspect of the work that I do.